Churchill, his remains are reposing at his late residence. Funeral from there this morning for Requiem Mass at 11 o'clock in St Columbus Church Glen Swilly, followed by interment in Temple Douglas Cemetery. The funeral mass can be viewed on church services at Dot TV. Family flowers only, donations to the Friends of Letter Kenny University Hospital, care of any family member. For more details, including any family health guidelines for wakes and funerals, please go to highlandradio.com. This Tuesday, around the Northwest is live in our draw from the open day at the new Sleeve League Distillery. We'll tour the facility, see the stills, and discover how the famous silky whiskey is made. With demand for Irish whiskey expected to double in the next 10 years, we'll also find out more about the heritage and history of peated whiskey. That's around the Northwest, live from Sleeve League Distillery in our draw today from 12. McDade's Bathroom Plumbing and Tiles, serving the Northwest for over 40 years. Explore our showroom with more than 40 displays. Choose from an array of shower doors, shower trays, baths, and bathroom accessories. Speak with an expert about tile selection and wall paneling. We also stock an array of plumbing, heating, and stove spare parts, as well as a great selection of kitchen mixers and radiators at our trade counter. Our stove department is also available for you to choose a style that suits your needs and complements your home. McDade's Bathroom Plumbing Tiles, Bunker. We're here for you. For big name menswear at great prices, visit Watson Menswear in Letterkenny. Top casual brands including Mishmash, Sixth Sense, Tommy Bow, and Penguin. If you're going to a wedding or a big event, formal wear names include Remusimo, Andre, and White Label. Also, a great selection of children's casual and formal wear in stock. Watson Menswear open seven days a week on Main Street, Letterkenny, and online at WatsonMenswear.com. This is a radio ad, voiced by an actor, made by a producer. It's all pretty straightforward. But when it comes to radio, there's more than meets the ear. If you're someone who's always wondered what goes on behind the mic, then the Learning Wave Skillnet 360 Broadcast Bootcamp course could be for you. You learn all about radio from some of the best people in the industry, from music presentation, music links, research, interviewing and editing, to voice training, and how to produce and present features for local, regional and even national radio. Better still, it's all free and fully funded by Learning Wave Skillnet to the Skillnet Ireland Skills Connect programme. All you have to do is apply before Friday, August 13 on learningwaves.ie. Go on, it could be your lucky day. Can I get two specials, please? One sourdough and Caesar salad. And by the way, I'm 12 weeks pregnant. Yes, yes chef. chef! We don't always know who's at risk from COVID-19 and other viruses, but we do know how to protect them. Keep hands clean and wear a mask. Let fresh air in, get vaccinated and stay at home if you are unwell. From the HSC. For us all. This is the second hour of the 9th Noon Show on Highland Radio. Donald Cavan with you until 12 noon today. Just some of your comments that we received after our conversation there before the news with Mary and Rebecca. Uh, the Education Minister needs to step down. She is failing badly in her role, says the caller. Now the caller says, first RSC, now LGBT+, plus, and now pornography. What planet are these people on? No consent, end of, so says the caller. Why don't they introduce a course for parents instead of children? Now the caller says, surely schools can't give the details yet. They don't know yet either. That's what the public consultation is for, to put together an appropriate programme. Caller says women watch porn as much as men. Another caller says, from my own experience, some women use sex as a tool to take money from men. Another caller says, I agree with Rebecca. It's the parents that teach this, not the teachers. Teach life-saving skills, etc. Trying to infiltrate our children at a young age. Disgusting is what it is. My eight-year-old granddaughter is very different to the eight-year-old I was, so I respect that she needs to be equipped with information that I never thought of, never mind understood. That's another one of the comments from our listeners. Just remind you, you can uh, give your comments to the programme. Uh, text us 86 60 25000. That number good for WhatsApp messages as well. You can call us on 074 91 25000. And also, of course, you can use social media at Highland Radio on Twitter, Highland Hub on Facebook, Comments at Highland Radio on email. Uh, very shortly, we'll be having our community guard this slot. But uh, before we do anything else, it's time for bingo. So if you play Highland Radio, NCBI Radio Bingo, 
Grab your books, grab your pens, and we'll hand you over to Kevin. It's time for NCBI Bingo on Highland Radio. It's Tuesday the 19th of July. You're playing on a brown coloured sheet. The reference number is S2. It's game number 29. The numbers are... 12 66 22 37 74 36 The number 8 44 83 and 78 Phone your claim to 9104833 before 8pm tonight, leaving your name, contact number and the name of the shop where you purchased your book. Get all your NCBI Radio Bingo information at highlandradio.com. It's the 50% off Mega Summer Sale at Right Price Tiles and Wood Flooring. Up to 50% off all tiles, wood flooring, outdoor slabs, cladding and bathware. Everything in store has been slashed in price. The Right Price Tiles and Wood Flooring, 50% off Mega Summer Sale. Stores nationwide. Sale ends Sunday. No one likes an empty-handed guest. <gasps> That's why at Lidl we have a new range of chilled cakes and desserts from just $2.99. Grab delicious fresh cheesecakes, custard slices, eclairs, apple turnovers, an indulgent black forest gatto with chocolatey flakes, or gorgeous Belgian chocolate ganache cake. Best guest ever. Lidl. More for you. Hi, it's Owen. I can't answer the phone right now. I'm currently enjoying the advanced comfort seats and suspension with progressive hydraulic cushions in my new Citroen C5 Aircross SUV. I'm really enjoying the drive, so please don't leave a message. With Citroen's advanced comfort technology, you may end up travelling further than you planned. Experience Citroen Comfort, a five-year warranty and flexible payment options across the range. For more, see citroen.ie. Citroen. The new Citroen C5 Aircross is now available at your local dealer, Highland Motors, Mountain Top, Letterkenny. Kicking off the 53rd Plum Money Festival on Sunday the 31st of July, it's Cleona Hagen. And later, it's Jerry Guthrie. On Monday, it's Jimmy Buckley. Don't miss these and many more open-air concerts at this year's Plum Money Festival, Sunday the 31st to Sunday the 7th of August. For a full programme, check plummoneyfestival.com. This ad is sponsored by Joyce's Centre Plum Money. The Community Garda Information Slot is brought to you by Sheridan Security Systems. Protecting what you value most. Call today and get your zero wire alarm system from €299. Sheridan Security, 912625. And this is the Community Garda Slot on Highland Radio. And delighted to say that we are joined on the programme this morning by Garda Niall Maguire. Niall, good morning. Good morning, Donald. Uh, great to have you with us, Niall. Um, we're going to start in the, uh, well, two areas really. We've got two vehicle thefts uh, to report and we'll start in Stranora. Yeah, a bit of a mini crime wave. This one, Donald, um, uh, bear with me, it's kind of drawn out and, and a bit of an incident. I'll give you the background to it. So my colleagues in Letterkenny are investigating these incidents, uh, multiple incidents that occurred on Tuesday the 12th of July. A white Reynolds Kango van Parcel registration 151D was stolen from uh, Trina Mullen in Stranorler between 9am and 9.25am, so the morning time of the 12th of July. A male who was wearing a blue top was observed from the driver's seat leaving in the stolen van and um, it is believed that two men who appeared to be uh, intoxicated were seen walking in that area that morning around the time. So. Uh, we want to speak to them, uh, two individuals. A port- report was then received in relation to dangerous driving incident involving this van uh, in Lifford on the Letterkenny Road at uh, shortly after half nine in the morning. And then at approximately quarter to ten, <coughs> some 15 minutes later, I read Toyota Land Cruiser registration number 01G6259 was stolen from Riverlands Carrigans. The owner of the Jeep had just got out of the Jeep and was tending to his uh, animals when he seen a man exit a uh, a white Reynolds Kango van and uh, jump into his Jeep and steal it. The Jeep was driven off towards Carrigan's and the van followed. So it's uh, the the same van, obviously, that was involved and stolen earlier. The Jeep crossed the border and then returned for a brief time into Carrigan's area where the driver of the stolen Jeep uh, this um, total land cruiser hit a ditch at Pump Street, Carrigan's at around 5 minutes to 10. 
The jeep was then set alight. Uh, the fire brigade attended the scene, and the two men left the scene in a in the stolen Reynolds Kango van and travelled onwards towards Derry. But they were involved in a, a further collision, collision with another vehicle at Kildrum Lower. That's in Carrigan's at ten o'clock. So it's all happened within that sort of space of half an hour. Don't know. Uh, the other driver wasn't injured in, in this accident. Thank goodness. The stolen van then made its way, kept going, and uh, crossed the border at Calais, and it was recovered then by the PSNI. So uh, if any of your listeners can help us in identifying these two uh, people, uh, maybe uh, if anyone had dash cam footage in around the Carrigan, Stenorder area, Stenor area, please um, make it available to my colleagues in Letterkenny, and they can be reached on 74 Nine one six seven one hundred, or indeed the Garda Confidential Line one eight hundred treble six treble one. Yeah, and, and and this all, as as you say, kicked off in in the Stranorder area um, <laughs> just before nine on on the twelfth, and and continued over the course of the morning on, until they they crossed the border a little later in in, in Carrigans. I mean, it, it's it's a strange sequence of events. Is, is it thought that maybe they were planning another crime, perhaps a break in somewhere, a robbery somewhere? Or well, who does, knows? Does it appear? Yeah, it, it, it's difficult when they get a. You know, it's, these two these two clowns are they're just they're obviously drunk and uh, they've just uh, no respect for mm-hmm. other people in the community or the safety of other people or indeed law and order. Yeah. And it'd be best if they were identified and arrested. Uh, as you say, you're cooperating with the PSNI on that one, so it is very much a cross-border investigation. So we do have listeners in Derry and across the border, and I mean, if they're in a in a position to help, either contact yourselves or or contact the PSNI. Thanks, Donald. Absolutely. Uh, to Bunkranen now and uh, the theft of a boat. Yeah, uh, Gardaí and Bunkranen are investigating the theft of a blue and white punt boat. A uh, punt boat is a flat bottom sort of tender mm. boat that's quite small in size, but it, it had the uh, blue Yamaha engine on it. It was stolen from Inch Island uh, between Wednesday the 13th of July at 6pm and it was recovered then at Fawn on the 14th of July at a half nine. So just a quick skip across the little um, yep. stretch of water there. The When the boat was recovered, the blue uh, Yamaha engine had been stolen from the boat. Now, uh, I don't have the horsepower of, I'm sure it's quite small if it's on a little punt, so yep. something around maybe 15 horsepower or lower. Uh, it says blue Yamaha engine. Uh, I'm not sure if that's correct. It, it, they're usually grey, I think, but I'll, uh, I was speaking to Groinja this morning and she said she'd maybe try and get a Facebook picture up uh, yep. on the Garda um Facebook page. So anybody that may have any information or has been offered this engine for sale or knows its location, please contact the Garrison Bunkrana 074 9320540. And, and with a view toward that, uh, some advice and information about boat security is to be posted on your own Garda Shea Donegal Facebook page today. Absolutely, Groin is looking after that today. Yeah. Um, to Letterkenny now and Fortwell Court in the early hours of last Thursday. Yeah, Fortwell Court, which is on the lower main street in Letterkenny uh, in the early hours of Thursday, the 14th of July, so between midnight and 7am on Thursday. Damage was caused to the door of an apartment. Uh, it would appear to have been kicked and the lock on the door was damaged as a result. No entry was gained, thank goodness, and anyone or any residents that can help us in identifying uh, who did this and for what, what reason please contact the guards in Letter Kenny 074 9167 100 anybody noticed anything suspicious at Fort Well Court Lower Main Street uh, in the wee hours of Thursday morning and, and skipping back just a few days another location in Letter Kenny uh, this time Isle View Apartments yeah Isle View Apartments down I think it's down there behind Domino's Pizza um, uh, on thir- oh, sorry on Tuesday the 12th of July again at 6pm uh, until Wednesday the 13th of July at midday, uh, a resident of one of the apartments returned home to discover a brick and uh, glass on the footpath outside. A small window had been smashed. Again, no entry was gained. And if anyone can help us in, in solving these two incidents, please contact the guards in Letter Kenny and maybe leave some information for us. 074 9167 100. When you want to get to the bottom of, and it, it seems a strange one, certainly on the face of it, an elderly man has been receiving calls from a person in relation to an alleged note. Yeah, um, we, we don't normally get into sort of these one-off um, uh, incidents uh, or, or scams or mm. possible scams, but uh, this one is, has, has been highlighted nonetheless um, for, for various reasons. So just maybe to make people aware of this one and and the... Uh, MO, the, the, m- the modus of it, a 
a gentleman um, received approximately three or four phone calls from a person who spoke in a foreign accent and he thought it was an American accent mm. in relation to a note that this person that was calling had said had been left on their car windscreen and the caller was very persistent and indicated that the note had contained the landline number of this senior uh, citizen and it related to an incident involving their cars. Uh, yeah. So this man was very concerned and obviously he hadn't been in, in America or involved in any incident with this other chap. Um, it's, you know, it's possible that this caller had a note left on the one screen and had read the contact details incorrectly, you know, however yeah. sl- small that chance may be. But given the amount of scams that are on the go at the present and, and sort of new scams, we want to highlight the matter in case anybody receives something similar along them lines and not to uh, just advise people not to give out any information and simply hang up and they can contact ourselves uh, in your local Garda station. Was this potentially then the precursor to a demand for money for alleged damage caused to the uh, person with the accident's car? That seems to be yeah. the thinking Donald, yeah. Um, something we spoke to Grania about last week and we're happy to highlight again this week is happening on Saturday and that's the Float for Hope boat run in Burton Port. Yeah, it's, uh, hopefully they get the weather for this one, Donald. This, that's this Saturday, the July the 23rd, the Float for Hope boat, boat run, which takes place out of Burton Port Harbour. This year's event is based on water safety awareness and we've had a lot of tragedies this week uh, and indeed yesterday. But with the uh, recent improvement in the weather and crowds flocking to the local beaches, it's a good one to attend and it'll be a, f- a f- sort of f- uh, fun family day out. Mm-hmm. Donald, um, mem- members from organisations such as Irish Water Safety, the RNLA, the Donegal Coast Guard, the Swally Seals, yeah. the CFFAM Iron Moor, the Sheephaven Sub Aqua Club, the Ross Snorkeling Club, mm-hmm. Club to name but a few will be demonstrating different types of water safety and techniques in the water and on the pier. Uh, there'll be information and advice for everyone attending at Burtonport, Burtonport Pier on all aspects of water safety. Kicks off at 9am this, this Saturday and it's an excellent chance for people to uh, maybe um, see a few of these uh, people and skills and maybe talk to them and there's different clubs and stuff there I'll be looking to recruit people. Yep. And, and, and your own colleagues will be there as well of course uh, giving out information and uh, supporting the day. Absolutely. Yeah, so if anyone can uh, help with any of these issues, we'll be putting the whole of the the slot up on our own Facebook and social media pages uh, as soon as the show is over. You'll be putting it on your own Garda Siakona Donegal Facebook page as well if anyone wants to listen back. Um, Obviously, uh, Michaela in news is going to be highlighting a a lot of the stories over the course of the news bulletin today as well. Just uh, in in terms of anyone with information, um, if you just want to give us the the confidential line again, Niall, in case people want to use that particular number. Yeah, it's a number that's used quite often, Donald. Um, It's 1-800 treble six treble one and it's just a matter you could just leave a voice note yeah Gardner and Maguire thank you very much indeed and that's uh, Gardner and Maguire there that is the Community Garda slot for this morning the Community Garda information slot is brought to you by Sheridan Security Systems protecting what you value most call today and get your zero wire alarm system from 299 euro Sheridan Security 912625 just some of your comments uh, about our previous discussions before we go any further. Typical of the Department of Education to drop this consultation into the mix when schools are closed. Surely this should have been launched when the schools had been open to give teachers and parents time to look at it together. A discussion on school SPHE. What about a parent who wants to protect the innocence of children? The reason why there is an increase in sexual assault is because children are exposed to this from all angles. Schools, TV, cinema, internet. No mention of what is being done to close those websites altogether. Internet providers could block all porn today if they wanted to. No political will to do it globally, says a caller. Women are not objects for men's benefit, but some women use men for their own benefits. It's not always men that are in the wrong, says a caller. Parents need to be educated on how to talk to children on these topics. Uh, Mary is well used to packaging her presentation in attractive wrapping paper that looks great on the outside, but inside is hidden much more than can be unsavoury to many young people. Some of my grandchildren have been repulsed at some of the present content, and I have had to elaborate and discuss the topics based on respect for all involved. They were open to accepting the moral values that I expressed and discussed with them. Um, Now, we had a query with regards to a caller who had a service for which they paid 600 euro and now a couple of um uh, uh, not too long while later they're, they're hearing a funny noise in the back they're wondering what's their recourse and a caller says the service all depends on what you ask for generally it's just the engine and check the tires i want a full check over is the term to use if you want a thorough check it's down to the person getting the service make sure you ask your mechanic what they call a service there's an element here 
of buyer beware, so says a caller. It's 28 and a half minutes past 10 o'clock. We're going to take a short break. This Tuesday, Around the Northwest is live in our draw from the open day at the new Sleeve League Distillery. We'll tour the facility, see the stills, and discover how the famous silky whiskey is made. With demand for Irish whiskey expected to double in the next 10 years, we'll also find out more about the heritage and history of peated whiskey. That's Around the Northwest, live from Sleeve League Distillery in our draw today from 12. Want unbeatable value from Sky? Here's the deal. Get Sky Broadband for just €29 a month, plus Sky Q for only €10 a month. Super fast, super reliable broadband. And Sky Q with your apps and recordings. That's Sky Broadband for €29 a month, plus Sky Q for €10 a month for 12 months. Now that is unbeatable value. Go to sky.ie. Availability subject to location. Offer does not include Sky TV subscription. New Sky customers only. Setup fees, minimum term and further terms apply. For more info, see sky.ie slash speeds. Are you worried about trees on your property? Northwest Forestry Services Bally Buffet are fully insured and have over 40 years experience in dangerous tree removal, tree felling, surgery and stump grinding. For peace of mind, call Northwest Forest Services Bally Buffet for a no obligation quotation on 9132033. Join the Highland Radio Outside broadcast team this Wednesday from 1.30 in Letterkenny Credit Union for the first car draw of the year. Two lucky Letterkenny Credit Union members will each win a brand new Mazda 2. And there's €10,000 in cash prizes to be won. So tune in this Wednesday from 1.30 to hear if you're a winner with Letterkenny Credit Union. Book a private VIP screening at Century Cinemas. Perfect for celebrating birthdays and special occasions. Featuring a private VIP screening with luxury reclining seating, delicious popcorn and a brilliant choice of movies. For further information on our VIP packages, call Century Complex Letterkenny on 07491 or visit centurycinemas.ie. Text 086 60 25000. It's the Nine to Noon show on Highland Radio. We're in mid to late July, which in Donegal uh, usually means just one thing, and that is the McGill Summer School. Delighted to welcome on to the programme this morning Dr. Joe Mulholland, who is the director of the McGill Summer School. Joe, good morning to you. Good morning, Donald. Uh, Joe, uh, yeah, we're v- very well indeed, thank you. Joe, for the past two years, uh, there's been an online programme offered. Uh, by the McGill Summer School. Um, I'm sure you and your colleagues will be delighted this year to get back to your spiritual home of Glenties. Well, we were very anxious to get back. I mean, online is great, and we had great reaction to the two years that we did online. And, of course, the advantage is that you can go abroad to speakers uh, far more easily without having them come to Glentis, which which is a hell of a trek for some. But um, no, we're ba- we're back in business, albeit shorter. Uh, we we start on on Thursday afternoon and run until Sunday, and and but we have a, 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 a terrifically packed yeah. program, I think, at the end of the day. And, and it's a very well, appropriate and that, a very course, opposite uh, theme this very year. Very much dominated by Ukraine. It's the destruction of, yeah. UK, of Ukraine and its people, and the fallout for mankind. And the fallout is going to be very, very broad, and and very, very uh, important. And as you said, the past two years saw you take the opportunity to bring in some international guests online. That's going to be done in this instance as well. And on a number of occasions over the course of the four days, there will be contributors from Ukraine taken in over um, the Internet. There will indeed. And uh, at our our opening on Thursday afternoon, which has been opened by the Ukrainian ambassador, as is fitting, uh, we have... Uh, a connection with one of the most important politicians in Ukraine, and uh, we're uh, obviously then presenting something of U- Ukraine's culture, and me really to show that we're we're not talking here about uh, destruction of buildings only, although it's terrible, uh, and and the murders of people, but the destruction of a civilization really. Uh, of people who, uh, 
our great artists and dance and so on and and sing and we'll give some examples of that on Thursday evening yeah. to get us off to a start. And of course, uh, along with discussion about what's happening in Ukraine, uh, very important debates taking place in, in this country that are linked to it. Debates on things like neutrality, and they very much are going to be addressed over the course of the four days as well. Yes, indeed. I mean, a lot of a lot of things have changed in a short space of time uh, because of uh, the, the Ukraine uh, tragedy. Uh, and, you know, uh, the things we have to question now. And it's going to have a, an enormous effect uh, on, 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 the way, uh, uh, on the way we do things. Uh, it's going to have an enormous effect on the European Union, uh, who, uh, which must now cater for, for a different Europe than the one we had uh, six months ago. Uh, so uh, uh, these are all uh, extremely, uh, extremely worrying and are going to really, we're go- it's going to change in many ways yep. our, our lives, even agriculture, which is, a, 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 is in trouble. And, 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 and those know, changes... Yeah, and, and those changes are the fore of the discussion because it's fair to say one of the hallmarks of the McGill Summer School has always been it discusses, it discusses the issues of the day and it discusses the background to those issues and the history behind those issues. But it also looks forward and the McGill Summer School always asks the question, what's the impact going to be? What's the world going to be six months, one year, two years, five years from now? And that's a hallmark of McGill. It's looking forward as well yes, as looking ab- back. Absolutely, you, you, you've got it in one. Uh, uh, so uh, uh, it, it'll be an interesting few days and hearing uh, experts talk about Russia and where it is going. What, what is going to happen to Russia? What, what kind of policies is it going to pursue? Is it going to continue with this war? And is it going to go, to, uh, go for other wars? Uh, it's just mind-boggling. Uh, the, 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 possib- the awful possibilities that are out there uh, and, and uh, at the end of the day are threats to the planet yeah. because you know we're beginning to hear uh, about nuclear and this kind of stuff and uh, you know we, 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 we didn't realise we would come to, come to that The John Hume uh lecture has always been a high point of the McGill Summer School. Traditionally, it it would have been delivered on what would have been the opening weekend. In this instance, it's been delivered on Saturday afternoon and a very uh, prestigious speaker for this one. Yes, indeed, it's been delivered by the the provost, uh, uh, the fairly new provost uh, uh, of Trinity College, uh, Linda Doyle, uh, very capable and uh, able lady and uh, she will talk about uh, issues related to the program uh, Ukraine and so on and the future uh, again always the future and and and, uh, uh, and looking forward uh, and uh, we have uh, just we've always included the arts in our yeah. programs uh, and we can't do much this year because it's just too short and uh, the time was too short. But we have a lovely recital for those who are interested in music by Katrina McElhinney Grimes, uh, who has very strong Donegal connections, but is a wonderful uh, national and international pianist. Uh, that's on Saturday evening. And I see we have Charlie Bonner reading Friel's short story, A Man's World, as well, and that, that is going to be something special. And our own Charlie Bonner, a townsman of my own, um, uh, reading, reading Friel, how he has been in many, many Friel, many Friel productions in his, in his working life. Uh, and uh, we'll be visiting uh, the the house where dancing at Lunasa was actually lived out 
uh, called the Laurels, yeah. and which we have been trying to renovate now for some years. We've made progress. Uh, the building is now secure when it was almost falling in, yeah. and uh, we hope to make progress and all of that uh, issue in the future. But that's that's for another day and uh, yeah. uh, 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 and another another kind of school. Yeah, it's the forty second year of the McGill Summer School. Um, those who are lucky to secure tickets and be able to do so will be able to attend the various talks and, and discussions uh, at the Highlands Hotel in Glentys. For those who can't, Jumal Holland, the opportunity to uh, watch online streams is there. How can people go about accessing those streams? Oh yes, absolutely. Because there, we we have to be mindful of safety here. We we had hoped that COVID would be very much on the wane, but that doesn't seem to be the case, not yet anyway. And we'll be paying particular attention to security of of anybody who's who's coming there, and. Uh, we, we we wouldn't, I mean, we don't want huge numbers, uh, but we ca- we have the facility of people watching it online. Uh, it's not the same thing as being there for the discussions and arguments and so on, but still uh, it, it has worked in very well in the past. And that, that can be, uh, you can... Uh, register for that for for very little i think it's uh, 20 euros or something for the for the whole school yeah and uh, so the the details should be on our on our website the mcgill website and 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 just so it's uh, mcgill summer school dot ie is it just re- re- remind yes, me what is. that address is yeah uh, Dr. Joman Holland, Director of the McGill Summer School, we look forward to, to the discussion from Thursday until Sunday. It, it's always an illuminating and interesting uh, school, and uh, it always brings up a lot of new stories, which uh, at the height of the summer silly season is something we journalists really, really like as well. So thank you for that. Uh, Joman Holland, it's been a pleasure, and thanks for speaking to us this morning. It's a pleasure for me too, John. Thank you very much indeed. Dr. Joe Mulholland there, the director, and we wish uh, Joe and the team all the best with the McGill Summer School. Um, In a few moments, um, I'm I'm going to be speaking to a politician in in Donegal, and I'm looking forward to this conversation because he's a man of whom I am very fond, and he is a man uh, of of whom uh, you, you will be aware, and we'll have, I have no doubt, a really good old yarn with. That's coming up in, in just a moment. Just want to remind you that on this coming Sunday, the 24th of July, we have a tractor and vintage car run. It's uh, in association with the Ballyar 10K fundraising. It's uh, in support of the Donegal branch of MS Ireland and also in support of Cancer Care West. It starts and finishes at Cars of the Diamond in Ballyar. Entry fee, €20 Euro per vehicle. Registration starting at uh, 1 and then the actual uh, tractor and car run. Uh, gets underway at two and we're promised when you get back to Cars of the Diamond in Balear, you'll not leave again with an empty stomach because there shall be um, there shall be refreshments and uh, all sorts of goodies available to you. If you were listening uh, to the show last week, we were uh, chatting um, to the uh, Mayor of Letterkenny, Milford Municipal District, uh, Councillor uh, Donald Mandy Kelly, and in the course of it, he, he wished a happy 92nd birthday to my next guest. Councillor Ian McGarvey, it's a pleasure to welcome you to the studio. Good morning to you, Donald, and the Highland Radio this morning as well. Um, I mean, anyone who's watching Facebook is going to be looking and they're going to be saying, hang on, I thought he said there was going to be a 92-year-old in the studio because you certainly look nowhere near it, Ian. What's, what's the secret? <laughs> Thank you, Donald. Donald, one thing I will say to you, I suppose I lived a simple life. Things weren't anything like what they are today. And I neither drank or smoked. I was very athletically orientated. I used to run at sports. I used to play football. And I used to work hard. And I always had the feeling like one of the things was always my ambition in life if I could help someone else to improve improve their way of life, even from a very young 
and look after the elderly as well. I always yeah. thought oh, those were factors that was very, very important to society. And, and you've kept doing that. And I always and I, I, I've said this to numerous people that I have spoken to you in various contexts over the years. And you've told me that you've been raising issues on behalf of elderly people. And most of the time, the elderly people you are raising issues on behalf of are younger than you. Oh, that's great, too. But that's no harm, though, because, look, <laughs> I've been very fortunate, put it yeah. to you that way, because it could have been one of those people. And therefore, I can recognise very, very well and yeah. readily what the need and what they need most. And they're still being maybe overlooked in many cases as well, don't And that's quite regrettable, because when you reach a certain days, people put you into a certain category. Mm. And I think when you categorise people, it's like what I said about a person looking for a home help living on their own recently. The HSE determined because he was 66 years of age, he was entitled to no support. Yeah. So I made the case to John Hayes, who is now retired, that this man at 63 years of age could be worse physically than the man at 70 years of age and it should be on, we'll say, need rather than on age that the, the situation should be judged on. So thankfully, as well as that, John Hayes recognised the need and provided that there was a home help for that person too. So those are the kind of things that don't let. Mm. I always like to contribute to the needs of others, we'll say where, yeah. and make representations on the behalf where necessary. And, and in the chamber, you have not slowed down. If anything, you're actually more vocal now than you ever were. Because I, I can I can attest to this. I, I would attend I would attend quite a few of the council meetings, both the municipal district and, and plenary councils. And I mean, you know, there is no question of McGarvey sitting down at the back and keeping his mouth shut. McGarvey contributes contributes vocally and contributes often. Yeah, Donald I'll tell you one thing. Again, like when you adopt a rule of representing people. You not only have an obligation, but you're paid for doing that as well. Therefore, Donald, there are people out there with needs that's being ignored, an executive and others with respect to them. Doesn't take into consideration age or any other factor that would say need as well as are referred to. Because I look at the view, will say, no matter what anybody says, one thing's certain sure, when you're an elected representative, you have an obligation to democratically to represent the people number one and to look after the public at this number two and unfortunately for me Donald you know in the chamber you saw it happen many cases when there is deserving cases being made by somebody like me are being ignored yeah. and for example you saw already even that mass and the Monaghan would yeah. to me it's an eyesore number one to, and then threat number two and interferes with a, a customary rights that's there for over 400 years. Those types of things don't have always represented uh, now and in the past as well. And, and you certainly haven't been uh, in, in any way shy of coming forward and, and making your views on Dramonhan and, and other issues very, very clear indeed. You are an independent. Is that a help or a hindrance? Well, I was in Fianna Fáil for years. Mm -hmm. You know that. Yep. I actually contributed very much to Fianna Fáil. And over the years, and the people that I worked with as well, I had great regard for. Now, at no time did I have any, anything against any political party. And you see in the chamber, as you know, Donald, I'll support any representative, no matter what or who belongs to, provided it's in the interest of the people. So I've always had that, Donald. So I have had the experience of being through Fianna Fáil, many a time contributed in our days as well in Dublin and Ballsbridge. And even at one stage when I was making representation, when you talk about representations, I think Charlie was uh, Minister for Health at the time. I had him with the two lapels at an days in Dublin. When he actually abused me of making representation on behalf of somebody that wanted to get down to Galway at that time for a operation after waiting three years. So nothing's much changed since then. So you can see the circumstances that when I as a representative is elected, conscientious about what, say, the people that I represent, wants to help people and so on, you can run into difficulty. And you know the difficulty in the chamber at the present time. People asking the wrong questions and so on. It's a difficulty. Yeah. You, you've always been... My, my perception of Ian McGarvey has always been first and foremost as a campaigner. I think I would have first really come across you and interviewed you when you were leading a campaign against a, a mobile phone mast halfway between here and Remelton. And, <laughs> and that wasn't today or yesterday. <laughs> you, you, you remember the one I'm talking about, I'm well, sure. Of course yeah, I do, yeah. Donald. All I said to you, Donald, I had been asked by even Thomas uh, Gilday to go over to Glendish to talk against the mass at some time. I also was in Kerry as you know, 
1998, on the 2nd of December, when I was trailed up the street by the guard, I ended up in hospital and still suffers. If you sit beside me, yet you can hear my neck when it cracks every time I turn around, maybe, and so on. Don't. So, I never had fear, number one. I always felt, felt I had the right to be out and protest in the interest of those people as well. And the master in Kerry Keel was to be erected in my yard, the barracks, and you would have thought there were going to be a wire or something in the amount of yards that was in Kerry Keel that morning. And I, just like anybody else, was there, and I was walking along the thing, and I was knocked down, and the first thing I heard was take him out, and I was pushed to my face, first of all, and three of them trailed me up the street for about 30 years, and I fell off the seat going to Milford. The doctor had to come to take me out of the van, so I had no fear of what might happen to me, because uh, I thought what was justified, what I was standing out for. And, and and that's always been a common theme in, in in what you've done. I mean, up to just a couple of months back, you were standing in front of Dramonaghan Woods and blockading up there. So, I mean, you know, you've always married, as it were, the, the council debate and the council lobbying with direct action. Sure, because, don't look, you can talk all you like, but action should be noticed and should be observed. At least there's a reason for it, and that's all you're doing. You're standing out against will say what's wrong. And if you look at the Monaghan Wood, Donald, and you're well familiar, I know well with the, the legal situation there, the national guidelines say no new mass should be erected on new sites, but located on existing sites with clustering of necessary under section 5.3.3. If you look at the national guidelines, that refers to the very same thing as will say is quoted on our own development plan, and therefore we had people violate the county development plan themselves. Yeah. Now, do with respect, of course, what they have done, they have talked about in board Planella. I've written to them, and unfortunately, apparently, my letter was a few days late when they referred to it and all, and referred to the submissions that I had made. But at the same time, and board Planella shouldn't be exempt from, we'll say, representation by people apart from that who would have authority over them. Namely, we'll say, the Ombudsman can't even interfere with their decision. So I've been asking just the last day at the meeting there, we need to look at her, we'll say, Equality legislation number one and our constitution number two that states under section 40 and 41 that we protect the rights of people at all times and look after and the duty of care and protection is there for planning as well and it wasn't being observed on so therefore that's again a confrontation on my part. And, and just in fairness, in, in fairness to uh, the executive of Donegal County Council, I, I will uh, state that you, you and Liam Ward and others have had this discussion uh, vocally and often in both the Letterkenny Milford Chamber and, and in the, the Plenary Council Chamber as well. And, and the Council's position is that that development re- received the required position within Donegal lawfully and that decision was backed up and um, verified by Onboard Planola and, and that is the position of the Donegal County Council Executive. And I think it, it's important that we do sort of state the, the Executive's uh, Donald, I situation. I actually agree with you yeah. and I respect the Executive. I don't want to say, Donald, as Liam Ward, who's the Director, used to say to me, I don't want to fall out with you. Oh, yeah. I used to say to him, well, you can't fall out with him. I'm only making a representation on behalf of people. And if you look at the WBE, it's wrote that... Oh, yeah. Evil only exists because stupid, yeah. good people do nothing. And therefore, you know Donald as well, and this has not been critical of the members because they have the right to decide. They did not support me when I took a mini bus down to the Oral Centre, yeah. take them down to see the site, look at the location and judge for themselves was it fair, no matter about on board Planella or anybody else. Because look, when you sit in that chamber, what I hear coming across times as threats about what will happen if you do X, Y, Z, we have one obligation, though, as far as I'm concerned, when I sit in that council, let it be for turbines, let it be for anything else, to represent the views of the people and stand out for them as well, because they don't have that right to do it themselves. So I've always, I have no regrets about the like other things, don't, and I'm not looking for any credit for it either, and you know that. Oh, absolutely. If, if someone had gone back in time to Ian McGarvey, the Fianna Fáil stalwart, in his 50s and, and 60s, and said... Yes, Ian, you're going to be the mayor of Donegal. You're going to sit on Donegal County Council. You're going to become uh, one of the most talked about and celebrated councillors in Donegal, indeed, in the country. But you're doing as an independent. Would that in those days have surprised you if you had known that you would have a career in active representative politics <coughs> as a councillor, but you wouldn't do it under the Fianna Fáil banner, given that you gave so much of your life to that party? Donald. You just referred to something that I appreciated the period I spent with those people because, I gained a great deal of experience as well. Worked with them, canvassed for them and everything else. And yet and all, never was about me, but about what I could do through them for the people. And in fact, had a reason to follow it with one who I'll not mention. 
I think I'm a good second and tell him that they had asked me to come in to make representation on behalf of the people and they'd do it for me. And they told me I had no better, uh, that I think I had no better thing to do than tell, listen to Ian McGarvey about three or four cases that needed representation in Bill Aaron. So Donald, I actually would have known senators and Robbie Gulliher and Mark Daly down from Ke- Ke- Ken Marion, actually, and Kerry, who came here with three flags of the original Tom Meager flag that was erected in Waterford. Uh, one of them for two of the, each of the, one for each of the two schools, secondary schools in Milford, and one for the county council that's there, and the plate and all on it representing that kind of time as well. Mm-hmm. So, Donald, uh, I would have to say, on behalf of those people that respect to have acquired from people like that, and even when Robbie Goller would see fit to mention that I had a birthday, which is nearly a non event, say for that matter, but mentioned it in the Senate like in the morning, so it's, mm-hmm. it's quite commendable to the and appreciated by some And it's funny, you mentioned Robert, Senator Robbie Gallagher has been on the phone to us again wishing best wishes to Ian. Always a joy to talk to Ian. He describes you as a man of knowledge, which you absolutely are. There is absolutely no doubt about that. Also, I'm still uh, learning, Donald. Don't, don't forget. Well, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, I mean, as I, as I always said, the, the day you stop learning is, is the day they hammer the nail in onto the lid. That's the day you stop learning. And so you they come out the gate and say that's the end of my girl. <laughs> you know what? You'll outlive us all, you know. I'm convinced of that. You, you, you are the Keith Richards of Donegal <laughs> politics. Ian, I mean, you, you turned 92 last Thursday. I mean, people, I fully intend before I'm 70 to put my feet up and relax and enjoy myself. The older you've gotten, the more active you've become, it seems to me. And, you know, a lot of people are going to be saying, you know, <clears throat> is, is that man mad? I mean, you obviously take a sustenance and a joy and a sense of, I won't say a sense of accomplishment, but you you take, you know, a real sense of something out of your involvement in politics and your lobbying and your representing. What is it that keeps you going? Donald, to be able to achieve things and to make changes particularly, and I can refer now to someone like who has taken over. You see, Donald, if you, you're aware of some of the things I'm going to quote to you about the changes that has come about for a local authority member at the present time, they've withdrawn nearly any of the authority they had. Now, I can go back to the like of Sam Baxter in Milford, who was very helpful to me at a young age when I was not as familiar with the scene as I am today. And I'll never forget what he said to me when I was trying to buy my own house. And the uh, solicitor was actually proud to have struck me by it. The house of still in Dole. Bought it in 68. But he said to me, he says, it was a council property, you see, and at that time. And he said to me, young me, Yarvey, the solicitor was refusing to draw up a contract between a man who I'll never forget was very good to me. Wanted to sell me the house, moving back to Scotland, and had inherited it himself. And I'm in the same house today, Tony. But he says to me, young me, Yarvey, you're wasting your time talking to me. Take, take him down here. And he says, we'll have a solicitor across the street. Osborne was at the time. Sign up the whole thing. And that's how that that's how I became owner of that house. Otherwise, I could have been out of it all. And again, I wasn't afraid to face a challenge at that stage, Donald. So mm. there was something on the inside that told me, we'll say, don't accept everything he's told you, but challenge it. And check is it right or wrong? Because look, the information and the experience you gain is invaluable. Now, Donald, when I was as well, when I grew up, I can say to you another thing. I went to the shoemakers in Milton. There were four of them in it, but I went to them and learned the trade. And there's a man yet, John Lowry, when I was young. He said, many a time at 12 o'clock at night, he heard me bath in the shoes just across the street. I was able to earn enough money when I started to work and hand in the pay to the house of a big family. And I have still a photograph at home sitting on the master's chair at a year old where they took me over and got my photograph taken with the rest of the brothers. So it's up in the wall there, Donald, so I can go back quite a bit to those kind of things. And regrettably, another thing, Donald, do you know when you talk about, we'll say, rules and regulations and so on, when I got married, when I got married, Donald, in 54, my wife was nursing. And like we'll say, people today, if they're marrying into somebody in a good job like that, it makes a difference. Oh, Absolutely. The marriage ban was on. She couldn't work one day longer. She had to leave her job, Donald. I know. Yeah. When she reached so pension age, Donald, yeah. now she's deprived from any entitlement whatsoever, and there are very few of them left around. And it's quite regrettable, Donald, that this is the state of when we talk about equality and about equality, legislation and all this stuff, already, that people are being treated like that because she's not the only one in this country. Absolutely. 
Ian McGarvey, you're 92. You are the oldest public representative on the island of Ireland. Within the next two years, you will have a choice to make because we're going to have a local election within the next two years. Fair enough, Donald. Will you, will you go again? Donald, look, put it to you this way, physically. I don't feel different. You heard me in the chamber just last week there. Mm-hmm. Is my contribution as good as ever, is it? I asked you to judge now. I, I would say you are probably more vocal than ever, yes. <laughs> And you've always been vocal, in fairness. <laughs> Donald, it's good to talk to you because, look, you see what I'm doing in Mac today? Turning the thing over to yourself mm. to ask your own opinion. What should the, like, a person like me do? Because I value those things. I'm not going to say I would act on it, but... What, 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 I, what I would say, in honesty, is that the Donegal County Council Chamber will be, or would be, a poorer place without Ian McGarvey. No, thank you for that. And on that note, I'm going to say, Ian McGarvey, thank you very much indeed. No, no, Thinking of hiring a private investigator? Or do you provide a private investigation service? Did you know that private investigators must hold a PSA licence issued by the Private Security Authority? Private investigators who operate without a licence and anyone employing one are breaking the law and could face prosecution and fines. For more information on how to get a licence or to report on licensed private investigators, visit www.psa-gov.ie Summer sale now on at Florid Letter Kenny Up to 30% off selected lines of engineered and laminate flooring But hurry, the summer sale will not last forever Call into our showroom today and avail the fantastic offers or view our stock at florid.ie Offers only while stocks last Park Run has taken my run into the next level It's a good opportunity to catch up and meet friends and make new friends as well it's how I got introduced into the local running club. Just knowing it's there every week, no matter what stage you're at. I find it's a much healthier approach to running. I'm Dave and I'm a park runner. VHI believes park run is more than running. That's why we're their biggest supporter. Join us every week at your local park run. Mr. Blue Sky, please tell us why. The Euro Millions jackpot is a guaranteed 230 million euro. Play responsibly in store, in app, or at lottery.ie. The National Lottery. It could be you. This Tuesday, around the Northwest is live in our draw from the open day at the new Sleeve League Distillery. We'll tour the facility, see the stills, and discover how the famous silky whiskey is made. With demand for Irish whiskey expected to double in the next 10 years, we'll also find out more about the heritage and history of peated whiskey. That's around the Northwest, live from Sleeve League Distillery in our draw today from 12. And that's. Um Highland Radio News. Uh, no, it's not Highland Radio News. It's the 9 till noon show. It's uh, just gone 11 o'clock. And, and, and anyone who knows Ian McGarvey will be really surprised to hear that he's still standing behind me chatting. Um, as I say, it's two minutes past 11 almost. Time for the news headlines. And we say good morning to Michaela Clark. Thanks, Donald. Good morning. A mother believes there are people who witnessed a hit and running Cardona that left her son with serious injuries. Lisa's son Nathan was hit by a dark-coloured car on the Moville Road on Sunday, July the 10th at around 3.40am. He has been left with serious inju- injuries which require his nose to be rebuilt and facial reconstruction. A string of incidents involving the thefts of vehicles in Donegal has been described as a mini-crime wave. Investigations are continuing following the theft of the vehicles on Tuesday last in the Stranorla and Carrigan's area. One vehicle was later set alight and the other recovered by the PSNI. Minister Charlie McConlogue has backed Micheál Martin to lead Fianna Fáil into the next general election. The Taoiseach will step down from his role at the end of the year and some backbench TDs have called for him to give up the party leadership at the same time. An elderly man in Donegal has been left intimidated after receiving a number of calls from an American man claiming a note had been left on his car windscreen. The man alleged that the note contained the landline of the elderly man and related to an incident involving their cars. It has yet to be determined if it is a scam as the elderly man was not involved in any incident. An historic sister city partnership agreement between Ireland and the US has been signed by the president of the Association of Irish Local Government, Donegal County Councillor Nicholas Crossan. 
Ireland has become the fourth country to sign the agreement, which encourages stronger links between Irish and American local governments. Donegal County Council is being urged to do more to protect thatch buildings in Donegal. The last remaining insurance company that provided insurance for thatch cottages has recently withdrawn from the market, leaving it impossible for owners to get insurance. And Gardaí and Boncrana are investigating the theft of a blue and white punt boat from Inch Island. It's believed the boat was stolen between 6 o'clock on last Wednesday evening and 9.30am on Thursday morning when it was located in Fawn. It subsequently emerged that the engine, a blue Yamaha, had been stolen from the vessel. Those are the latest headlines. We'll be back with an update again at 12 noon. Shane Connolly Car Sales has relocated to Drumlonagher, Donegal Town. Besides offering quality used cars, we have a brand new state-of-the-art workshop for all your car service needs. At Shane Connolly Car Sales, we deliver straight to your door and offer excellent finance packages. Check out our social platforms or visit shaneconnollycarsales.com. If you've got magic moments or great memories captured on your smartphone, now is a great time to have them printed at mcgees.ie. Simply upload your favourite photos, choose your size and finish, and McGee's will take care of the rest with the results delivered to your door. Prices are from just 12 cent, and there's also creative options available. Preserve your memories today at mcgees.ie. If you're getting married, the in-house design team in Bizprint can get all your wedding stationery and signage needs customised to your requirements. Just visit weddinginvites.ie or call Bizprint at Port Road Letter Kenny on line one double seven nine double five. Getting value on your shopping has never been more important. That's why at Super Value we have great offers like Super Value Fresh Irish Strip Loin Steak Save 33%, Deliciously Refreshing Abelio Alborino Only 10 Euro, and get new weekly money off vouchers on the Re Rewards app. For low prices that compete with anyone, it's got to be Super Value. Enjoy alcohol responsibly. Beat the cost of Brexit with no customs charges. Do you need a UK address for your limited company or personal use? Spice Hub in Derry can provide you with your own mailbox. Have your post and parcels delivered to Spice Hub and collect at your convenience. There's brand new 20 foot shipping containers now in stock. Ideal for all your storage needs at our Springtown and Coolmore depots. Find us on Facebook at spicehubderry.com or call 04871 878077 for more details. Call now on 074 91 25000. We're into the third and final hour of the Nine Till Noon show. Just a note in from Rosaline and all the Connollys say, please wish our dear friend Ian a happy 92nd birthday. He was out cutting his hedge a couple of days ago, better than any 20-year-old. And I mean, you know, I, I've I, I've said it before, I'll say it again. Ian McGarvey is a remarkable man and it is absolutely true. Uh, he is as vocal, if not more vocal, in the council chamber than ever he was and more power to his elbow. I've got some guests in the studio, going to go to them in just a a moment before I do, just want to go back to yesterday and uh, the works planned for the high road in Letterkenny. We spoke to D from the Honeypot. We also spoke to uh, Councillor Jerry McMonagall. We put a query in with Irish Water. We've got a response. They say details regarding the water main improvement works in the high road are still being finalised. We would intend to update all communication channels, including issue of a press release regarding the exact nature of the works, commencement dates, and duration of the works in the coming weeks. As this is a short section of pipe replacement, it's anticipated these works will come commence in August and be completed in September. Farron's Construction are delivering this improvement project on our behalf. They've begun proactive direct engagement with local businesses in the area to explain how the works will be delivered and to understand individual businesses' needs during this time. Local pedestrian and emergency access will be maintained at all times. Deliveries to local businesses will also be facilitated as required and that was one of the issues that D did raise and express concern about. Every effort will be made to limit the impact of these necessary works on both local businesses in in the area and also on the local community. Now, we have two guests in studio. Uh, delighted to welcome Dennis O'Donnell, who is the chairperson of the Letterkenny Number no. 1 Celtic Supporters Club, and also especially to welcome uh, Jonathan Foley, who is one of the contributors to a book, Celtic Minded 5, Essays on Celtic Football Culture and Identities. The book is being officially launched this evening at the Station House Hotel in Letterkenny and uh, it's um, it, it's great to be able to welcome uh, both gentlemen to studio so um, 
Now, I'm having... Uh, Jonathan, I'm going to go to yourself first, if I may. Um, tell us something of the book and how you came to become one of the contributors. Uh, well, the best way I could put it, Donald, is that it's the book of... A collection of essays, I suppose, about the unique history of Celtic Football Club. Uh, you'll notice throughout the book, like, there's bits about religion, bits about politics. But from my own angle, mine was more so about the, uh, the history of migration between County Donegal and Celtic themselves, because it is a kind of unique history. You know, anybody who's... Uh, been on the town at four o'clock in the morning and sees the amount of buses heading off from mm. Letterkenny, from Ross's, from Remelton, Donegal Town. There is a unique uh, connection, I think, between Donegal and Celtic. So I, uh, I'd always kind of written about it in my own way, but I got to know Dr. Joseph Bradley, who is the editor of it. Uh, I got to know him through my time living in Scotland. Uh, so we forged connections, as we do, and he asked me to come along and uh, be a contributor for it. So I was... Uh, I was delighted to see my name in print on it. Mm. Dennis, as, as Jonathan said, I mean, there is a, a link uh, between Donegal and Celtic, always has been right back to the foundation of Celtic Football Club, a Donegal man central to that. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Joseph McGrory from Mount Charles. Uh, we didn't realise we had who was on the first committee when Celtic was founded in the early 80s, 1888, 1890. And we found out he was buried in Frosts. He died in 1937 and we commemorated him. Mm-hmm. And your last speaker that was in here, Ian McGarvey, we, Ian was over at that commemoration and I wish Ian all the best. Mm-hmm. He's, uh, uh, he'd, when we went looking for him, he, he was there in Mount Chalice. Um, the, the connections with Donegal are on Patsy Gallagher, Ramelton, mm-hmm. um, Packy Boner, our own Packy mm-hmm. Boner. Everybody will remember Packy from Genoa. Uh, Genoa. And, uh, and then in later years, you have Aidan McGeady and recently... In Fulcara, we have a young lad whose connections in Fulcara, young Aidan mm. Cannon, who signed last week for Celtic. His people uh, are from Fulcara and Mara Rorty and Derry Connor, and we're delighted. Like the association, I'm involved with the Donegal Association. We've been taking people through the late Paddy Swinney mm. and Don Lowe, uh, who started this with people from the town here, like Shamas O'Donnell and PK Kelly. And now Donny McIntyre, we, the association covers Sligo. We have Shane Kelly and Sligo. We take schools, we take underage teams mm. like Ballyrain, the top of the town in Derry, Dermot Moore um, and uh, Nichols, all those people. It's a family. Like I was born in Scotland. Uh, it was just because you were from, uh, our parents were from Donegal. We, uh, Parkhead was only over the road. Yep. And our fa- my late father would have took me to my first game. And we're delighted to have somebody uh, like Joe Bradley come to Letterkenny tonight to launch his book and Dr. Aidan Donaldson and our own Jonathan Foley and Paddy McMenamin yeah. will be there to outline their own essays. And the book's on sale there. Yeah. And you, when you, if you buy Celtic Find... Celtic Minded Number Five. You get a free copy of Celtic Minded Number Four for twenty euros. So we're inviting everybody to the launch tonight in the station house. And as you said, Donald, we're a big Celtic family. It stretches uh, all over the county. Yeah. Derry. Uh, we go down as far as Sligo. We go up as far, and even last weekend in Falkara, the Falkara Celtic Supporters Club had a big weekend. Huey Sharkey and Jerry Harley. They had a big charity week. Again, that's all part of the Celtic family. And if you go further back, the soil, yeah. the original soil from Donegal Up, came absolutely. from the Rosses and they took the soil back in 1995. Mm. Rosses Celtic Supporters Club, which Michael David laid in 1892. Yeah. And, and, and Jonathan, it, from what Dennis is saying there, and it is true, there is something almost in, in, in the DNA of, 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 of Celtic Football Club that, that has Donegal in it because it seems to be more than just, you know, kids in school will decide, oh, I support Man United or I support Liverpool or I support Chelsea or I support Man City, depending on, you know, what was what's prevalent in the school at the time. When I was growing up in school, there was loads of Leeds United supporters because Leeds were in the ascendancy when I was in school in the 70s. So a lot of people my age are Leeds supporters, um, you know. and and But it seems in Donegal, being, being a Celtic supporter is more than just picking the team that's mm-hmm. popular at the time. It almost seems to be in the DNA. Yeah, I think there is something kind of cultural, and I dare say even a little bit spiritual as well. It's like an extension of, like Donegal is a history that is rich in yeah. migration. It's a huge, huge part of our our culture as Donegal people. And I think with Celtic, there's sort of, that's a sort of a living embodiment of mm. generations who have gone on before us, and uh, you know the society that they lived in in Scotland. Like as Dennis said, that he lived over there as well. I did too. You know, I lived in a, a different time period to when Dennis lived over there. 
But yeah, it, it's 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 hard to put words to. I know that's a bit strange to say, considering we've just released a book mm. on it. But there is something almost spiritual that sort of magnetically pulls Donegal's people's attention to the club in Glasgow. I mean, we can't really say that they are a club from Donegal as yeah. such, but there's still something very, very unique about the Donegal interest. In well, and I, I would presume, given that, like most football clubs, I mean, Celtic Football Club was, was formed to give young working class men who were working in an area and living in an area a chance to go out and socialise and play football. I would have assumed that quite a few Donegal migrants or indeed people born in, in, in Scotland of Donegal heritage would have been members of Celtic in the early days. And I'm sure if you looked at the very first uh, Celtic football t- club teams in the 1880s, mm-hmm. there was huge Donegal representation in those teams. We mightn't know the names, but I would wager there was a fair few Gallaghers and O'Donnells mm-hmm. and so on and so forth well, actually, on those one of the Celtic w- teams. Actually, one of the first players that played for Celtic in 1893 was from Manor Cunningham from Ray Mahoney who was Charlie McElhaney mm-hmm. he played with Celtic on two occasions and that's one of the first connections I've made yeah. in my research uh, of people from Donegal you know and like we've been lucky where like uh, the book uh, I think 25% of the fund in the book is going mm-hmm. to Celtic FC Foundation which is a charity wing of Celtic uh, which is the reason Brother Walford mm-hmm. Andrew Cairns from Ballymote f- f- founded Celtic was to, 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 to supply dinners mm-hmm. for the people mm-hmm. in East End of Glasgow. And we've been lucky that the foundation has been over here on two occasions. We had two big dancers recently uh, pre- pre-COVID with um, Brendan Rogers and Scott Brown. And then we were able, with the money that was raised through that charity, to challenge it in through the Donegal Down Syndrome, through Gina Grant, Tony McNamee and Darry, Danny Ferry. And we hope that that's going to come back on board again mm-hmm. in September. So that's the, the, the Donegal uh, people working with Celtic to help uh, the Down Syndrome community. Yeah. Uh, and Donegal, you know. And, and Jonathan, it's fair to say that the Donegal links and, and that Donegal affinity has always been recognised too by the club, that it is a two-way process, that the club has always looked toward Donegal, the club mm-hmm. has always appreciated and, in in a sense, supported the Donegal fans and acknowledged them. I think I think so. They've always been quite aware of their own history. Celtic have, would be very aware of the Donegal influence in the west of Scotland. Uh, you know, you mentioned players there and we talked about the, uh, the gentleman that Dennis mentioned a few minutes ago, but even like some of Celtic's most famous early players, the likes of Patsy Gallagher and Jimmy McGroy of Donegal ancestry, I think Celtic historically seem quite thankful to Donegal for that there. It's almost like there's a feeling of they're one of our own. And as I say, that goes right in through the 50s and the 60s with mm-hmm. people like Paddy Crairn and so on. And well, you, you could name a, a list as long as you are. As you said, Jim Brogan. You know, Jim Brogan, yeah. And like, it goes right up to the modern day even. Was she and Duffy playing for Celtic last year? Mm-hmm. Yes, right. You know, of a of a Letterkenny background as well. So I do think that um, they are very aware of the kind of Donegal connection. Like I was fortunate enough to play at Celtic Park in a challenge game, uh, a charity game, sorry, I should say, three years ago. And when I went in, I had a T-shirt on underneath my jersey for Donegal Down Syndrome. Mm. And the the people who worked at the club, you know, were instantly asking, you know, what part of Donegal are you from? And yeah. you know, they would tell me that they spent their summers over here as well. So there is that awareness and that connection, surely. And it's glad it's great for us that we get to. Celebrate it a wee bit tonight in the in the station house. Mm-hmm. So tell us a bit more about your own specific essay, uh, Jonathan. As, as you said, it does look at the whole history of migration from mm-hmm. Donegal to Scotland and so on, and and that links. I mean, obviously, you've put a lot of thought in into the the piece you've written, mm-hmm. um, as you do to all your columns in the Leader and uh, elsewhere where you're writing. Um, t- tell us something of of the essay and and, and your conclusions. Well, uh, the best way I could put it, I suppose, Donald, is that it's a bit, a bit of a social history of the migration. Uh, like it is true that there's a, there was a lot of Donegal movement to the west of Scotland even long before the times of the famine or and Gortamore, you know the seasonal harvesters, the taddy hookers, as they were known. But of course, then after the famine, the, the, that uh, influx influx into Scotland just it, it went up skyrocketed, and obviously that the um, Donegal people who went there, you know, they were seen as starving and diseased and Gaelic speaking with a unusual religion in what was a very very Presbyterian society, I suppose in industrial revolution Britain. So it was kind of it was basically kind of a, a, a study of their story of how they got settled into Scotland and how Celtic became a, a cohesive influence in setting up charities for them. But obviously, then I didn't want to spend too much time just on the foundation of the club. I think that's been done so many times before. But then it was just maybe about how you know people like the supporters clubs here have uh, set up supporters clubs to transport fans over and back every weekend as well that have kind of kept that migration going as well. And of course, in between times. You had so many players, like I've just mentioned, who kind of kept those ties between 
the football club and the county of Donegal. So it's it's sort of a social history, I suppose, down uh, Donald, from the 19th century right up to the present day, really. And, and Dennis, from your own point of view, as 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 as, as Jonathan, you know, said, you know, so, so truly earlier on, you know, walk around the town at four o'clock in the morning, you know, very you'll see the buses leaving. Now there'll always there'll also be buses leaving for Old Trafford and buses leaving for um, for Anfield and, and buses leaving, you know, for for other venues across the UK. But it seems with Celtic in particular when those buses leave Donegal there is almost a sense of uh, going home about it and I'm sure whenever you go to Parkhead whenever you go f- to a match there is very really well I think it'll be v- v- very real in your sense but there is a sense of going home oh definitely well like when you pass the garbles like it's gone uh, a lot of the old garbles is gone but that's where I was reared and brought up and went to school in St John's but a lot of the people travelling with us like Charlie McDade there from the old town he walked his whole life and uh, and and Glasgow, uh, and plenty more. Colin Houston from Dunlow. Like people say, how far they can't believe how far we've come. Some of them men leave Dunlow. Uh, Kelly Beggs, Eamon a- a- Og McHugh, um, they leave Kelly Beggs at two o'clock in the morning, and, and they're not back. Uh, we come back on the twelve o'clock mm-hmm. boat, and they're not back either in Sligo or uh, Kelly Beggs or Dunlow to all hours in the morning the next day. So. Uh, we feel that we're just one big family. We know each other. We know each other's families. Our our parents before us who have gone before us, they what they had to leave here. They, they both my parents were from Donegal, like plenty of other people. They had to leave here. There was nothing for them. My father was the eldest of seven. He went to Glasgow like many mo- before him, and my mother and they reared us in Glasgow. But they, when the opportunity arose, they came home. But like Celtic was all part of, as you say, our DNA, mm-hmm. and the people that we take over regularly are 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 associated with that. And Celtic means so much. So we invite everybody tonight. Are most welcome to come along to the station house at half seven uh, to listen to Joe Bradley, who is uh, has an abundance of. Celtic history. He was a lecturer in Stirling. He's now in Edinburgh, and also to Dr. Aidan Donaldson and to our two very own and John Johnny Johnny Foley here beside me, and to Paddy McMenamin who spent many a year in mm. Terman. So we ask everybody: you don't have to be a Celtic supporter. No. You want to come and learn the history. Yeah. Why we're we're so unique, and uh, we would have great relations with all the other clubs in the town, the Premiership clubs. I try to take. Uh, a lot of the school children over so they show them the atmosphere mm-hmm. Celtic the songs you know and yeah. uh, the, the whole atmosphere on a European night in Parkhead is unreal because mm-hmm. you can hear from players like NES dad and all the great European players you know the, the, one of their favourite stadiums yeah. is Parkhead you can't get over the atmosphere it's, it's incredible well as, as you said uh, Joseph Bradley the editor of Celtic Minded 5 essays on Celtic football culture and identities will be among the guests uh, at the launch this evening in the station house um, and I'm, I've no doubt there'll be a huge crowd down there tonight because I mean you know the level of support for Celtic in Donegal and the weather North West is, is, is well established uh, Dennis O'Donnell chairperson of Letter Kenny number one Celtic supporters club and Jonathan Foley one of the authors who has uh, contributed to this uh, excellent book thank you both very much indeed thank you Donald thank you very much with a smart meter you can take full control of your home's electricity usage but here's the important bit only if you sign up to an Electric Ireland smart meter plan our personalised usage insights will help you make the most of your electricity so if you'd like to find out the perfect time to put on a wash or see how your bill's looking on any day of the month search Electric Ireland smart meter plans and find out the best plan for your home Smart meter required. T's and C's apply. Calling Bus Air and Expressway passengers. If you're travelling between Donegal and Dublin on Expressway's Route 30X30, we recommend booking your seat online at expressway.ie for the best travel experience. Most people are booking ahead to guarantee a seat and you get an advance email in the event of any service disruption. All passengers can track where their coach is using Expressway's real-time passenger information. And our customer care agents are available by phone seven days a week. Have a great trip with Expressway. We love summer at Dunn Stores with fresh picnic ideas any two for four euro. Think tasty salads like fruity couscous 200 gram paired with our Cajun chicken breast slices 140 gram and our range of Irish ham slices. 54 delicious options any two for four euro. 
Plus, with our 10 off 50 grocery voucher, you save even more. Which means every trip to Dunn Stores means better value. Dunn Stores, always better value. Terms and conditions apply. Voucher can be used on next grocery shop of 50 euro or more. This Tuesday, around the Northwest is live in our draw from the open day at the new Sleeve League Distillery. We'll tour the facility, see the stills, and discover how the famous silky whiskey is made. With demand for Irish whiskey expected to double in the next 10 years, we'll also find out more about the heritage and history of peated whiskey. That's around the Northwest, live from Sleeve League Distillery in our draw today from 12. Well, I think that counts as a lively song. That was U2 and Desire. Now, just want to mention that um, we've had a message from Lachlan Hart. And uh, Lachlan is running the Dublin Marathon this year for his father, Jimmy, uh, under the theme Get Jimmy Out and About. Now, Jimmy Hart, of course, is the former councillor and senator. In 2013, Jimmy had a sudden fall and wound up with a life-threatening brain trauma. Thanks to the miracle workers in the HSC, they saved Jimmy's life with radical surgery. However, um, as Jimmy's um, mental health dropped over the years, his ability to care for him safely meant that they had to get full-time care in a nursing home. In February 2020, Jimmy moved into the new home. Then, of course, we had the coronavirus lockdown. A lack of physiotherapy and the ability to be out and about have almost rendered Jimmy confined to his bed or a push wheelchair. Now, the family car has been retrofitted with a swivel chair to get him back out and about, but with the aid of an electric wheelchair, his life would be much better if he could get out and visit places with a level of independence. Now, Lachlan has run marathons in the past for the neuro 
Department in Beaumont and also to raise funds for the No Barriers Foundation. And this year, he wants to raise money to help buy a foldable electric wheelchair that would allow them bring Jimmy to places he currently can't go and any remaining funds will then go to specialist physiotherapy. So happy to mention that on Lachlan's behalf. Now, the time is 28 minutes past 11. We are going to... um, Take a very short break. After the break, we're going to be speaking to a lady in Rathmullen who found herself in a very uh, bad position because of car parking. Back in a moment. At Michael Murphy Sports and Leisure, we know a good pair of trainers makes all the difference. Whether you're running marathons or training for your first 5K, we stock all the leading brands, including Asics, Brooks and New Balance, with different styles and features to suit individual running needs. Call in store or shop online at michaelmurphysports.ie. Want to win the ultimate festival experience? Electric picnic tickets are now on offer every week this summer with Aldi. Plus side stage viewing, glamping and your festival essentials too. Just spend €40 euro or more in store, take a snap of your receipt, upload it to aldi.ie forward slash electric picnic for a chance to win big. Who knows, while you're in store, you might even find a special buy festival tent. Aldi, every day amazing. 18 plus only, end September 11th, excludes alcohol, prices and full T's and C's at aldi.ie forward slash electric picnic. At Hickey, Clark and Langan Insurance Brokers, they compare quotes from all the leading insurers, so you get a great price. Home, motor and van, farm, holiday home, travel and liability insurance, they quote them all. So if the worst happens, you're covered. For a competitive insurance quote today, call Hickey, Clark and Langan on 912-6688 or pop into their office at Ballymacool, Letterkenny. Hickey, Clark and Langan General Insurance is limited. Trading as Hickey, Clark and Langan is regulated by the Central Bank of Ireland. Call now on 074 91 25000. I'm joined on the line by Anna, who is the owner of the yard in Rathmullen. Anna, good morning. Morning, hi. Very well indeed, thank you. Anna, um, <coughs> yesterday was the sort of day that businesses in places like Rathmullen are depending on to bring in uh, revenue because come the winter, it's, it's going to be a very different story. However, because of inconsiderate car parking, you found yourself in a very disadvantageous position yesterday. T- 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 tell us what happened. Yeah, it was uh, pretty, pretty shocking, really. Um, but at the beginning, I thought, um, you know, who had parked there may just come back. So we even sent one of the guys to go down the beach to see if we could find that person and sent texts to a few people that they know who who owned it, you know. But uh, then that, then I did phone the guards and I said, oh, crikey, um, this car, you know, and well, what can we do? And um, they said, oh, yeah, we can find the number and we can call them. And they did. And they were so helpful. So I was really appreciative of that. Um, and then they said, oh, that these people were actually on a, on a boat up the swilly, you know, going, oh, well, that's, that's the end of it for us today, you know. Um, there was no way of getting them back. So uh, and I mean, turned, a, a car had parked right in front of your gate and you were unable oh. to open the gate to allow people in. Yeah, and it's actually not, not joking, just maybe a couple of three inches. Even three inches we could have worked with it. <laughs> you know, um, it was just that. I, I wouldn't mind, but the evening before, I had the same thing. I had to, I couldn't leave until about eight o'clock because the car I pulled in. I would usually have tables outside just to keep the doors um, from being blocked. And we just brought them in. The car went and parked. It was very close to where, oh my God, the car, another car had parked there. I couldn't leave till eight o'clock till they came back. I was like, oh wow. And, and I mean, obviously, it, it's, it's clearly marked that it's a business and then there are clear markings on the road out, outside of the gate, but it seems that was totally disregarded. Yeah, and I suppose I'm sure it's not, not great intent. It's not the person's intention or anything like that. You know, it's just an awful, just, mm. I don't know what you'd call it, but um, I just think it needs to be more, more aware, I suppose, and just more considerate, just think twice about the door you're in front, you know. Um, I mean, that's from a business point of view, yeah. it would be the same for probably for a home or whatever. But I suppose you have to roll with these things yeah. now, you know. Um, it's very busy down here, you know, with the weather, great weather we're having. So. And, and, um, and the point that you've made is, yeah, the regulars will know to come in. But the passing trade, the visitors won't know to come on in. And really, on a day like yesterday, what you're looking for is that, you know, and, and God bless the regulars. The regulars are the people that keep every business going. But the passing trade, the visitors to the area, they're the ones that are going to bring in the extra revenue. They're the ones you really need on a day like yesterday. 
Oh, 100%. Like, you know, our summer months are, you know, and put the ferry on and everything. And then on Monday, Tuesday, there's not a lot of places to go. So we're one of the few that are actually open for, you know, for trade. And so, so it's a kind of downer for the those visitors get coming off the ferry and there's nowhere to go, really. So, um, so yeah. Uh, but, like, at some, like, hopefully now we'll just have to catch up for the rest of the yeah. season and make the most of it. But I, I can't let all these things get us down because even at with, with the surf school, Adventure One, because where the yard is part of Adventure One, and we had other issues in the evening. Like, so I was there, like, oh, right, here we go. We have to roll with these things, you know? Yeah. Um, but, but, but I mean, you know, you, 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 you had to put a message up on, on your own Facebook page and, and on your own so- social media, effectively saying, look, we're pretty much close today because someone yeah. has parked outside and has blocked us off completely. And, and maybe the, we, we've got to you know, send a message out to people that, look, you know, just, you know, when, when you see a space in front of a gate, I mean, it does have consequences. If, if you park there, you're blocking people off. In your case, the other night, you, you were blocked in and physically couldn't leave. Um, you know, that you know we, we have to, as car drivers and as parkers, realise that, you know, there are consequences if we park inappropriately. Absolutely. You know, really, if that message came across, you know, it's just to really think, you know, even just, but what if it was somebody else's house, you know, mm. somebody who needs to get out or anything like that, you know. Um, okay, we're a business, but it could have been another person's mm. house, you know, and, you know, with access yeah. issues to get in and out and all. But, um, yeah, and, and yeah. Th- <laughs> thanks, thanks indeed for talking to us, Anna, and, and for telling us the story. And look, hopefully that'll, it'll, will resonate with some people. Did you get a chance to speak to the owner of the car, by the way, or did they just uh, sneak back and drive away while you weren't looking? Well, this is it. I was waiting, looking out for who is this person, but no, they came and went, didn't catch them at all. Yeah. <laughs> um, gosh, but like we had their insurance number, you know, we're going to phone AXA and say, or whoever, you know, to, uh, do you know this? Can you phone them or whatever? I'm trying everything all yeah. morning, you know. Um, but no, I mean, I'm sure they they must feel bad. Yeah. <laughs> but like, you know, they wouldn't make it one yeah. put insult to injury. <laughs> it's bad enough for us, but I wouldn't want to spread that um, insult over. Yeah, yeah. Um, so. absolutely. Um, and as I said, th- thanks indeed for sharing your story. And, and hopefully, you know, you, you, you'll have some good days between now and the summer and that'll help make it up and, and just put out the plea to, to motorists. Look, please. If, if if there is a please don't park here, it's a business sign on the road. It's there for a reason. And let's give our local businesses as much support as we can. And, you know, the, the most fundamental support we can give our local businesses is to allow them open. Yeah, yeah. No, I like, really appreciate even coming on here yeah. onto the Highlands Radio for this, because even if that helps us out at yeah. all, you know, I know we're like discreet down in Rathmullen, but yeah. um, again, it's a... Uh, opportunity to say thanks you know for uh, even to all the customers who do come in regularly because we do have a great uh, fan base for in and, yeah. and for you to even have a chat with me this morning is you know kind of makes up for yesterday yeah. and we'll, we'll roll with it and get on with it and um, yeah yep. so, so. And, and Anna O'Donnell owner of the yard in Rathmullen thanks indeed for speaking to us this morning Thanks. Okay, Dogana, all, all, all the best to you. Now, um, just got a, a, a message in from a Charlie McGarvey, a long-time Celtic fan. He just uh, sent us in a message that says, um, Aidan Cannon. Another message from Gwanya McBrearty. My husband's two great uncles played for Celtic, the O'Donnells in, in 1934. So uh, the O'Donnells 1934, um, also with links to Donegal. Many Celtic players we know over the years have had links with, with Donegal and that launch, as, as we say, taking place tonight at the Station House in Letterkenny um, at half past seven. Just some of your comments before we go to our next uh, caller. Um, with regards to our discussion earlier on about the changes to the um, uh, Relationship, Sex and uh, Health Education programme, um, the RSHE, uh, sex is a gift from God. Its purpose is for reproduction of life. If not used in the way that God intended, it becomes the biggest killer of the soul. Uh, another caller says the following should be included in sex education rape pregnancy. Teens should be shown videos and photos of the dangers of smoking and drinking alcohol during pregnancy because of the rise of fetal alcohol syndrome. A video of what a healthy placenta versus an unhealthy one looks like um, you know, would be important. It's an eye-opener that needs to be shown to teens. Um, another caller says with regards to GPs, 
I had to call the GP this morning. I was shocked to discover I was charged 30 euro to be given a prescription over the phone. I never spoke to a doctor. The nurse called and said it would be left in the pharmacy for collection. It would have cost me 45 euro to see the doctor. I might as well have made an appointment and got value for my money. What do others think? Um, yeah, you do pay a fee to have a prescription renewed over the phone. Um, 30 euro seems to me to be steep. Um, but but certainly there, there, there is a fee for a prescription renewal um, off the top. I'm not, I, 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 I think in my own surgery, it's either 10 or 20 euro. I don't think it's 30, but uh, they're, they're, you, all, all surgeries will have some fee and fees will, will, will differ, I presume, wherever you go. Um, Caller says, I'm enjoying listening to Councillor Ian McGarvey. He reminds me of my late father. They had a great knowledge and never stopped working for the people, which uh, lacks nowadays. Younger ones just want the, the votes and they don't necessarily want to do the work. Um, now it sounds like a great man. Congratulations on his ninety-second birthday. And uh, Ian, um, Ian McGarvey uh, can and frequently does talk for Ireland. That's all I'll say about Ian. And uh, a man who is uh, well regarded by all in Donegal County Council and um, a, a very popular member of council. And I would, and, and we did sort of reflect the fact that Ian and members of the executive and, and council officials uh, find themselves at times at loggerheads, and they have some very robust discussions. But it's really important to say, in fairness, that on both sides of those discussions, there's also respect. And you have to say to Ian, he's a man who always makes his point, and he makes his point forcibly, but he always makes it with respect, and he always is responded to by officials with respect as well. And, uh, you know, it makes for some very interesting and very... Um, you know, robust conversations, but but also conducted within that spirit of respect. Um, Connor says there's a cow wandering on the road between Kilmacrennan and Milford near the Milford site. Please drive with care. Now, it is time to talk about farm safety because farm safety week is this week from the 18th until Friday the 22nd of July. And uh, there'll be a national event taking place in Newton Cunningham tomorrow. We'll talk about that in a moment. But the uh, Farm Family Chairperson for Donegal IFA is Victoria Boyd. And Victoria joins us. Uh, Victoria, good morning. Good morning, Donald. Thanks for having us on this morning. Yeah, it's an absolute pleasure. Uh, Victoria, we have you on Zoom. I don't, I don't have any video, actually. If, if you want to flick on your video screen, it would be nice to be able to see you. Um, at the moment, I just have a blank screen, but... Um, you know, it, it, it's your call, obviously. Um, the video far- is up. The, the internet's not great. Oh, I, so- I fully appreciate that. Yeah, I know. Yeah. So um, we'll, we'll, we'll just leave the, 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 the channel off, then the, the, the screens for the moment on, on uh, Facebook and YouTube. Um, Victoria, Farm Safety Week is an important one. Um, farm safety is an important issue. And, and sadly and tragically in Donegal over the years, uh, we have had fatal incidents on, on farms. And, and really what we want to do this week is to ensure that that doesn't happen again into the future. Yes, um, you know, this is the 10th annual Farm Safety Week that the um, Irish Farmers Association has ran in the country. And um, it really comes on the back of um, an average of 20 people per year dying on farms in Ireland as a result of farm accidents. Um, now, thankfully, those numbers have decreased um, um, with last year, um, nine deaths. Um, but there has been six so far and, um, you know, uh, with one just happening last week. So the farm safety event is really, really um, important in terms of ensuring the safety of our children and um, ensuring the safety of our farmers and um, in particular our older farmers as well on farms. Now, as we said, a major event taking place tomorrow evening, July 20th, at the Porter Family Farm at Lustical in Carrigans. T- tell us about that. Yes, so we are extremely grateful um, that the Porter family, um, and you might know them um, from social media, um, Shannon Porter, she runs the milk bar up there. It's fantastic and um, diversifying as well. So we're up there tomorrow night um, at half seven and we have a jam packed um, event. We have some fantastic speakers coming in from all over the country um, and they're going to be talking about um, their own experiences um, with farm accidents. Um, They're also going to be talking about um, farm safety in terms of livestock and machinery um, and then we're um, extremely grateful we have a man called um, George Graham he is the chairperson from a charity called Awareness Head to Toe 
and um, it's an extremely small charity, um, non-profit, very much supporting um, local farmers in terms of promoting mental health and general health, as well as farm safety awareness. So we're really excited to have him coming. And then we also have representatives from Embrace. Um, I know they've been on your show, on the night to noon show before. Um, which they support farmer or farm families through loss as well. Um, so, you know, and we've also got representatives from the Gardaí and from Chagas, and we're hoping that it's going to be a fantastic event. And all being well, we'll have the Minister for Agriculture, Charlie, as well, um, joining us um, as sort of our ambassador of it for the farm safety event. And, and, and it's important, obviously, that, uh, and, and in fairness to Minister Charlie McConnell, I mean, he is very much supportive of Farm Safety Week and uh, he, he and others want, want to ensure that this gets as much profile as possible and gets highlighted as much as possible. Uh, Vincent Nally as well, of course, Farm Safety Ambassador and, and Mentor, um, a man who knows an awful lot about this and is in a position to offer some very invaluable advice. Yes, we're absolutely delighted again to have Vincent Nally with us Um a man who had a, I had a, a, a quick conversation on Zoom with, who just was fountains and fountains of knowledge, um, you know, particularly keeping in line with the um, Health and Safety Authority and all the regulations that they um, have in place. Um, you know, so we're delighted that he's coming um, up to the event and um, he's going to be looking at livestock machinery as well as slurry glass. And um, we have... Um, slurry gas is particularly something that has become um, come to the forefront of farm safety um, because although we have um, a lot of farm safety equipment in place um, you know, to detect the slurry gas, it is one of the things that can um, cause absolute devastation amongst families. And um, he's going to be talking about that. And we also have a um, farm survivor um, uh, Mervyn Waters, he's going to be talking about his experience um, whenever he had an accident yeah. with um, uh, the gas things as well. So it's going to be jam-packed. And, and, and the contribution of someone like Mervyn is very important because, you know, you know, effectively a farmer will look at Mervyn and say, yeah, that that could be me. You know, that that he's the same as I am. And, and, and if he can have an accident, so can I. And, and one of the ads that, that we run and, and have run and, and do run here on, on Highland on, on a regular basis is is the ad that talks about the biggest risk being people taking the farm for granted. Um, that the, if the noise of the farm fade into the background and we no longer pay attention to the noises, we no longer pay attention to our surroundings around us, that's when we're at our most vulnerable. And, I mean, you know, the fact that uh, one of the charities being represented tomorrow night is called Awareness Head to Toe, and that maybe is the key word, and that word is awareness and being aware at all times. Yes, and, um, you know, there has been a massive push, particularly for well-being and um, farmers addressing mental health. And, um, you know, it, it is difficult for farmers to talk about their accidents. So we're extremely grateful that Mervyn um, has given us um, his story. But it, it's really important that he, as he would say himself, it's important to talk about these things, to get them out there in the open and to really just have, um, you know, an environment where farmers can really lean on each other, especially after the difficult years of COVID. Um, you know, and not have a stigma attached because, like you said, you know, farm accidents are very, um, you know, can happen very, very easily and they can be extremely devastating um, for young and old. And it can't always be down to something that um, we should have done this or maybe we didn't do that. It can simply just be, you know, an accident um, and that can be very difficult for um, an individual and for family members to deal with. So it's brilliant as well that we have Shannon Porter. Um, she's going to speak um, on behalf of the family side as well. Um, her father had um, a farm accident and she's going to be talking about how it affected her family and um, how it made them feel and how they dealt with it. So we're also extremely grateful for her to be there to share her story as well. Mm. As you say, the event is taking place on, on the Porter family farm. It's at Lustical in, in Carrigan's. And, and for those who use their, their Google Maps or, or their Apple Maps uh, to get around, the, the uh, air code is f 93 ED34. So F93 ED34 if you have access to a, an Apple car phone or Android um, 
uh, car phone uh, system that actually allows you uh, use use an air code for for navigation. That that that's the air code. Um, for, for for the rest of the week, obviously uh, Victoria Farm Safety to to, to the forefront, and, and you'd be encouraging people. Look, there'll be articles online. There'll be articles, I've no doubt, in in the Farmers Journal later on this week, and, and there'll be articles in the farming supplements in the various papers marking this. I mean, read the articles, have a look at the advice, go online, uh, look at the materials that you have on your own websites and, and, and your own social media and so on. There, there's plenty out there for people just to uh, to read over and listen to and watch and uh, to, to refresh their memories and maybe no harm to uh, to just look, look at all over again and just... Uh, you know, boost up our own personal knowledge. Yes, the um, IFA um, public relations have really um, put a massive drive um, in terms of um, promoting the farm safety and um, highlighting the factors of child safety and um, everything that comes um, along with it. And the social media com- campaign um, to promote farm safety that the IFA are driving um, is that they identify a hazard on the farm and they and you document the change that you would make to improve it. So um, it's trying to be as proactive as possible um, and you tag the IFA in it and do hashtag IFA Farm Safety Week. So if, if you you know if you're on the social media um, Facebook, um, the IFA have their own general page and then Donegal IFA have regular posts up all the time. And there will be, as you said, a lot of um, newspaper articles. So it's just really about bringing this to the forefront um, of our minds, particularly at this busy season where there's contractors out, um, you know, busy with silage, harvesting grain. um, And there's a lot of machinery machinery on our roads. um, So it's really important, um, particularly at this time in the year as well for us. Um, Victoria, thanks indeed for speaking to us this morning and uh, for, for previewing that event that's on tomorrow night uh, at the Porter's Farm at Lustigill in Carrigan's Farm Safety Week. Uh, it started yesterday. It runs until the 22nd, which is Friday. Uh, Victoria, thank you very much. Thank you very much for having us on. Our pleasure. I'm not the kind of person who wants to sit in a metal box. I don't want to slowly die in traffic. I want to ride a motorbike. And I want to keep riding a motorbike. I don't want to suddenly die in traffic. I'm not the kind of person who wants to lie in a wooden box. Biking is a joy. Don't let it kill you. A third of bikers who have died on our roads were speeding. So ease off the throttle and keep within the speed limit. From the Road Safety Authority. At Cooney's Home Interiors, we pride ourselves on offering you the very best in choice, quality and value on all home furnishings. Treat your home with a visit to Cooney's today and choose from our large range of suites, tables, beds, not to mention our large selection of home accessories. Our motto is, if you see it, you can buy it and we will deliver it to your door. Cooney's Home Interiors, Letterkenny Retail Park, style and perfection at incredible value. The big band nights at Logs of Cranford get underway this Tuesday night with dancing to David James and the Ryan Turner Band. That's the big band dancing this Tuesday night at Logs of Cranford with David James and the Ryan Turner Band. Getting value on your shopping has never been more important. That's why at Super Value we have great offers like selected fridge fillers like Innocent Juices and Glenisk Yogurts, only three for five euro. Deliciously refreshing Abelio Albarino, only ten euro. And get new weekly money off vouchers on the Real Rewards app. For low prices that compete with anyone, it's got to be Super Value. Enjoy alcohol responsibly. This Tuesday, around the Northwest is live in our draw from the open day at the new Sleeve League Distillery. We'll tour the facility, see the stills, and discover how the famous silky whiskey is made. With demand for Irish whiskey expected to double in the next 10 years, we'll also find out more about the heritage and history of peated whiskey. That's around the Northwest, live from Sleeve League Distillery in Ardra, today from 12. Broadcasting throughout the Northwest and across the world online, this is Highland Radio, your voice, your station. A number of people asking how they can... Text 086 60 25000. As I was saying, a number of people asking how they can look at the uh, draft materials with regards to the updated um, 
education programme that we discussed earlier with Rebecca and with Mary. If you go to ncca.ie, that's the National Council for Curriculum Assessment um, website, go to ncc.ie ncca.ie if you then click the drop down menu you'll see publications and research and if you click publications and research uh, the second item there's a a bit there that says have your say you click that and the second item down is now open consultation on updated junior cycle SPHE so you can do that through the NCCA website now I'm joined on the line by Mary Doherty who uh, was listening to the discussion earlier and and Mary you, you agree with what Rebecca was saying Yes, I agree. Yes, she she made a, a very good points there about the program. And yes, the the parents need to be fully informed about what what's going on in their schools. And there's um, maybe they could, you know, make it mandatory for the school to publish a list of the resources that they're using on their school website, and the parents would be would be able to look at that. Um, I heard you saying that you know parents. Uh, may not be teaching their children about these matters. But that still doesn't give the, the government or the uh, schools the right to take over the role of the parents. They need to talk to the parents yeah. and, you know, uh, see how they can help the children. Yeah, and, and I think um, in, in, in fairness to Mary from the Donegal Women's Centre as well, Mary did, did acknowledge that the, you know, the, the best way to, to do this is, is, is to learn through the parents and to talk with the parents. But the, the basic problem with, with it is that sometimes if that's happening, Mary, there, there can be a vacuum. Mary, th- thanks very much indeed for, for sharing that with us. And uh, it's, it's yes. a story we'll be returning to and we'll be watching with interest. Mary, thank you very much indeed. I want to very, very quickly go to another issue uh, that we referenced earlier on in the programme. And that is the um, Finn Harps, uh, well, the, the Donegal Community Stadium, uh, of, of which Finn Harps will be a, a major user. Joined on the line by Councillor Patrick McGowan. Uh, Councillor, good morning. Good morning, Donald. Um, you were able to confirm um, following discussions at yesterday's council meeting that this was the case. Obviously, from your own point of view, great news. Yeah, well, there's been another a number of options put to the Donegal County Council over the last couple of years. <clears throat> Obviously, the, the, the Donegal Stadium has been put on hold following sort of the recession, you know, and, and a lot of things to tight then. So um, they've been sort of tweaking and, and working at, at the stadium and the, um, Paul McLoone and the team there, the stadium team. So the, the, this is the final draft now, and this went... Sorry, sorry. <clears throat> Sorry, I just caught up. Um, so the, the, um, they met with the FEA and uh, they've had ongoing discussions for a while. So th- this is the final uh, proposal now. Uh, it's been supported by the FEA and Donegal County Council. All of the members of Donegal County Council yesterday supported as well. Uh, 500,000 FEA, Donegal County yeah. Council. And for herbs themselves. So this plugs the 1.5 million euro gap that was there. In in th- does that now mean basically that it's full steam ahead with regards to construction and, and completing that that facility? Yeah, the, the, basically the the way the government's um, funding was allocated, the four million that, that was provisional. That's on the basis that Van Harps could come up with. Uh, the matching fund, and, and now that that's confirmed, obviously the the, the minister is aware because I, I was uh, been contacting myself the last couple of days, was telling them that it's coming up at yesterday's meeting, and obviously we've been sort of in contact with his office now to say that the matching fund is is in place, and and basically we just need for his go ahead for the diggers. The diggers are ready to go, and Joe McMillan and sons are ready to go, and that we can get on and can complete the stadium now as soon as possible. That's great news indeed, uh, Councillor Patrick McGowan. Thanks indeed for uh, confirming that with us. And uh, we, we look forward yep. to early progress and to Finn Harps being able to move on to that new pitch and indeed the local community being able to use that pitch because it is first and foremost the Donegal Community Stadium. So we're obviously focusing on Harps a yep. lot, but it is there is more to it than Harps and it is going to be a community facility for the local community. Yeah, oh, I, I, absolutely. And, and then we have... Uh, the options then with the, the existing Van Harps um, 
pitch there in, in Avenue and Avenue Balvin. Yeah. You have obviously training, you have the academy, yeah. you have the women's football. So it's a great asset to have as well. Like so, it's a, a one-one situation all around. So fair play to everybody involved. All of the councils, not only all kind of council, but all parts, all of the county, all spoke in favour yesterday mm-hmm. of the management and staff. So everybody's behind it. So it's just now waiting on the minister to sign the, the letter to give his final approval. Excellent, and hopefully that will happen very quickly indeed. Uh, Councillor Patrick McGowan, thank you very much indeed. Yeah, thank you, Donald. Just a, a couple of final comments before we go. Caller says, I think it's great that Councillor Ian McGarvey is still working as a representative of the county, but I was working on an SE scheme. I was very happy working on it, but I was forced to leave and retire because I turned 66. Uh, caller asks, is that fair? Um, it, it, it's, a, it's, it's a good question. Now, they say about politics that anyone can apply and anyone can run for election and it's the people who have the say. Someone once said that politics, you need no qualifications, but the interview is the hardest one you'll ever do because you've got several thousand people on the panel. Uh, another caller says, with regards to the parking in Rathmullen yesterday, caller says, it's a disgrace the way they were parked yesterday at Warden Beach as well. Just to remind you that uh, John Breslin is not in studio. Uh, John is in our draw. He's coming live on Around the Northwest from the Schlieve League Still- Distilleries in our draw, speaking to owner James Doherty for a sneak preview of of the distillery before it officially opens its doors. So that said, John, following us around the Northwest. Um, thank you to all of you who participated. Thanks to all who um, contributed to the programme. A special thanks, obviously, to Caroline, who produced and uh, looked after the phones as well. Donna Marie for her help, Oshin for his help. Uh, most importantly, thank you to you for continuing to support this programme and for listening to the Nine Till Noon Show. We're back tomorrow at nine o'clock. Until then, have a very good day. They say you should have your second baby first because with your second baby, you'll have learned what to do, what not to do, what's best for baby and best for you. Like the Loopy Loo range from Lidl.